And this all seems like a pretty timely time to have the Shadow Home Affairs Minister and the Shadow Cyber Security Minister, James Patterson, with us. James, good to see you. Thanks for your time. So there's a bit to get through this morning in your field. So let's start with Elon Musk. He's again needled the Australian government overnight, posting that Australians want the truth and basically not censorship. Is Australia on the right or wrong side here? Good morning, Pete. Well, it was the former coalition government who introduced the eSafety Commissioner as a statutory office in the federal government and who passed laws following the Christchurch terrorist attack that made it unlawful to broadcast abhorrent violent material. You couldn't broadcast it on your television program. That means it shouldn't also be accessible on social media platforms. Otherwise, we know it's going to fall into the hands of kids. And so absolutely, the eSafety Commissioner and the Albanese government are right to ask for this to be removed from Australia's jurisdiction. Having said that, we do not play the role and we do not have the power to be the world's global censor of the internet. We shouldn't aspire to do that. So, that's for other countries to decide yeah, so that, what content their children... Let me just pull access. you up there, because that's exactly the point that Elon Musk is making, right? So he he says it's all fair enough within Australia, but then he says, why should an unelected official, that's the eSafety Commissioner, get to decide what happens beyond Australia's borders? Well, elected or unelected, I don't want foreign governments deciding what Australians can access on X or any other social media platform. I particularly don't want authoritarian governments requiring Twitter or X or any other company to take down things, whether it's the Russian government or the Chinese government or the Iranian government or the North Korean government. Uh, it's for democracies to decide what's accessible within our own borders yeah. and what our permissible limits of free speech are. We've done so. We've passed legislation. X should comply with that. Yeah, so, so in that sense, do you support... Um the injunction continuing today or not? And it's expected to expire at about 5 p.m. Well, that's a matter for the courts to decide, but as I've said, as a matter of principle, it is our right to set limits within our jurisdiction what our citizens can access. The Parliament's done about that by passing this legislation. Yeah. Uh, we do not have extraterritorial rights to censor the internet globally. Yeah, so what I'm asking, though, is, is, is Elon Musk, is he right to make the stand that he's making then on that point? Well, it's up to him to contest that in the court. Um, I don't have a view on that. I'm just saying as a matter of principle, our laws do not apply to citizens of other countries. For example, the United States has a First Amendment, a free speech amendment. It would not be lawful uh, to comply with the request of the Australian government to censor content that violated yeah. the First Amendment uh, free speech principles in the United States. And we shouldn't ask the United States to, for and its 350 million people to live and abide by our laws. They've got their own laws and their own Congress to do that for them. OK. Um, it sounds like you agree with him, but uh, just on the position that he's making, but uh, I've got to move on. Still with social media, though, a warning to come today from our top security and police chiefs who will warn platforms are being used by extremists to provoke a race war, discuss weapon-making and propaganda. They will say that we want access to encrypted systems. Will it be that easy, though, given that these bosses of social media companies aren't really keen on playing ball? Pete, we do have good cooperation with some tech companies on the national security mission. In the past, they've been very supportive of these things. But it is an extraordinary state of affairs that the Director-General of ASIO and the Commissioner of the AFP feel the need to stand up at the National Press Club and effectively beg them to cooperate. Again, we passed laws on this. The previous government in 2018 uh, passed laws that allowed the lawful access to encrypted communications uh, in Australia uh, from these companies. They have to facilitate those requests. And if they're not facilitating those requests, we've got a huge problem. OK, we're almost out of time, James, but I do want to ask you about your speech last night uh, and it's uh, moving forward with our defence. It's all about getting more troops, or part of it anyway, getting more troops into the ADF. You think you've got a way to do that? How are you going to do it? Well, the Shadow Minister for Defence, Andrew Hastie, will announce more details closer to the election, but I think the principles are clear. Service in the ADF shouldn't require you to split up your family or move around the country every couple of years. Uh, you in a modern world where both partners in a relationship typically work, it's a much greater burden than it once was to be rotating families around. We need more flexibility in the ADF. We need attractive pay and conditions. Uh, we need to reflect the modern Australia that we live in. We also need a government to inspire people to sign up to the ADF, inspire them to serve their country, to serve something higher than themselves, rather than just appealing purely to their own personal ego or self actualization or personal growth. Uh, we've got, we're facing very choppy waters ahead, and I think there is a generation waiting to be inspired to defend Australia, who, who believes in Australia, and it's up to us to, to fulfil that task and inspire them to do so. How much of a pay rise do you think they need? <laughs> I'm not going to announce that here on your program this morning, okay. Pete. It just has to be competitive so that people are willing to sign up and they stay up once they've joined.